Okay, part three. Some spectroscopy stuff for you. Um, once again, here we have our spec open. Um, and it is assumed that you have um, a well focused spectrum also open to fits file opened and you can see mine on the left hand side we're once again using the Vega one that I had from 2000 whatever 2001 and we've got our measuring lines wrapped around them and on the right you can see the uh, the uh, spectrum which is intensity versus wavelength um, and you see something interesting here too the wavelength is actually calibrated so we're going to talk a little bit more about calibration and a very handy little trick that you can use um, to make this work for you. Um, first, I want to uh, share the trick. The trick is as follows. Uh, you see the intense spike here. That's actually uh, the spike caused by the star itself here in the Fitz image. So there it is. There's the, the star. And then here's its really intense peak. And uh, it pretty much overwhelms the rest of the image. And then you've got the, the spectrum over here to the right. And you can see the spectrum over here um, in the Fitz image. Um, here's the trick. The trick is that for your optical system, for your telescope and your grating that you are using and your CCD camera, as long as nothing else changes, the distance between the peak of your star's image and any given spectral line for nearby objects, objects that are not redshifted, okay, hint, hint, um, the distance in pixels from here to say H alpha will always be the same. Now isn't that handy? That's like really really handy. And the same is true for H beta or any other line. So here's here's the center of, of the peak of your star um, to H beta. So the distance in pixels is always going to be the same. Now that, that is really powerful. Once you know that scale um, then you can calibrate your images much much more easily. Okay so write that scale down. And so let's look at the scale. We've got this tool here. It's um, up here in the upper right. It's called the measure tool. And we can, we can click on it. And, uh, and lo and behold, it's like, it brings up this little thing down here. It says measure, and it says show measure lines. And you can do that. You can you know, click on the show measure lines. And then you can drag these around a little bit. And so let's do that. Uh, let's measure from the center of the peak of the star and measure out to the hydrogen alpha line. Okay, and it tells me that the pixel value is 434.3 pixels. So now you know that for objects that are not redshifted or blue shifted uh, significantly, like quasars and things, that for this um, optical setup, which happens to be my 106 millimeter telescope and a, a GRISM and an ST8 camera, um, that the pixel distance between the star and H alpha will always be 434.3 pixels. That's really cool, okay? That's one of the, the strongest things. Ignore the angstrom values here because they're just, they're wrong, obviously. These are just not accurate. Anything that's gonna be visible will be, be between um, 400 and 700 nanometers, which is down here. So the scale's wrong here. So let's fix that. We can fix that. Um, we can go to uh, calibrate once again. And it says, um, click on a pixel. Uh, I'm going to make this one zero. We're going to click on where the star is. Uh, let's get these measuring lines out of the way. And click on the star. And that'll be zero. And then for H alpha, we'll click there. And we know that it's 6563 angstroms. And then we'll say apply. And then close. And then look at that. 400 to 700 nanometers is right here. Here's a cool thing too. We can turn off these measure lines so that we can see a little bit more about what's going on. Um, there's this cool little box down here called synthesize and when you click on it, it brings up a synthetic spectrum of, of what you took. That's kind of handy. But I think the neatest thing, if you're going to show kids anything um, with this software, is to click the fill checkbox. And then what it does is it, it actually places the spectrum underneath the curve so that you can show the kids that your camera is looking at visual wavelengths, but look at this, it actually beyond 700, it goes black, and that's because we're looking at the infrared. And then over here, you're looking at the ultraviolet. So this star is actually putting out ultraviolet and infrared light that 
um, the CCD camera can pick up and actually measure. That's pretty cool. Okay, so that's just something you may want to want to play with at some point or another. Okay, so there's your secret. There's your trick. Now, um, it's it's really good to know uh, the the distance in pixels from the zero point where the star is to say H alpha. Now, when I say H alpha, I just mean the absorption line, or maybe it's an emission line, but what I'm really meaning to say here is that the distance in pixels between the zero point and 656.3 nanometers is always going to be the same, okay? It's always going to be the same. Once you know your pixel scale, you're good to go, and that's really important. So I hope that helps, um, and now your calibration will be so much easier, and you can write that down in terms of angstroms per pixel, which the program will give you, 17.1 angstroms per pixel. There it is right there, folks. That is your pixel scale for this particular optical instrumentation. And that's pretty good for low resolution spectroscopy. Um, wishing you clear skies, and we'll take this one step at a time, and um, cannot wait to put out another recording.